you have your Bibles, open them to John 13. Uh, but the first scripture I want to quote today is John 6, 35. Most everybody, Bradley even picked this one out when, I, when he saw all the bread up here. John 6, 35 is the first of seven sayings that, that Jesus used the phrase, I am. When Moses asked God, um, what is your name? He said, I am. That means he's always there. Always has been, always will be, but he is right now. You can only meet God in the, in the right now. And this is the first of seven of those phrases when he said, I am the bread of life. So I got a phone call yesterday morning about 7 o'clock, and I said, absolutely. Now, I'm learned, I have not learned this yet, but I'm learning that when God speaks, that the answer is, should always be what? Yes. Does not, I can't say, okay, God, now explain yourself, and then I'll decide. Because that's usually what we do in life. If somebody uh, brings a proposition to us, we say, well, tell me everything about it, and then I'll decide. Well, when the Almighty speaks, who knows much more than we know, and he can see every facet of it, uh, of what he is planning to do, uh, that means that I have to say yes by faith. Because I, I can't wait to understand it by sight. I just say yes by faith. So... Uh, my immediate answer was yes. Then, like you would probably say, okay, Lord, now what? What are we going to do with 400 loaves of bread? I'm not that hungry. <laughs> and we don't have that much peanut butter in the house, amen? <laughs> and uh, there's some of this up here that um, I kind of like. And some of it, maybe not so much. Now, people have already p gibs on, on certain things. I won't this can I have that and the answer is well until it's gone all right but I, I begin to think of what I've been trying to uh, get in my own heart to be able to share the thought well from the pulpit is that we are to love the way God loves us the last two Sundays and one Wednesday night, I used this scripture in John 13. John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. How many of you vote yes for that? I, I see, I saw that hand. Y'all agree that we should love one another? Would it be a better place if everyone loved one another? Yes. Well, Jesus was for it. And then he clarified. He said, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. So he said, don't love the way you love. Love the way I loved you. Now, it's easy for us to love the way we love because there are qualifiers on it. I'll love you if, or I'll love what I choose to love. But he says, love, you, love others the way I have loved you. Then he goes on to say, by this, all will know that you're my disciples. You are followers of me. You are Christian, Christ-like, by how you have the love of God in you, if you have love for one another. So the key here is love. Now, I can take you to all the different passages, like 1 Corinthians 13, we talked about that a couple Sunday nights ago, where there is faith. We talked about faith for, for 10 weeks. Hope, love, but the greatest of these is love. But here's the deal. Do we love? Well, yes, we do. But do we love the way God would have us to love? Now, I'm not going to go into this in, de in detail. I've gone into it before, and I promise you, if y'all hang around me long enough, you'll hear me go into it many more times. The word love is agape that he's talking about. That means to look at something, and when you look at something, you don't look at it through your eyes, you look at it through his eyes. And when God looks at someone, though you may not see value in them, he sees value in them. He saw enough value in them to leave heaven 
to come and die the cruel death on the cross of Calvary, that's the depth of his love. Not only does he love them, he cherishes them. He sees value and says, I will put it ahead of me. So when he says that we are to love one another, he says that you should see them, listen to me now, and put them ahead of you. You should see what God sees in them. And you might have to look hard. You might have to look by faith because it might not be obvious to be seen. But understand that they were made, we were made, in the image of God. There's value there. God doesn't make trash, and there are no accidents. Now, my parents told me I was, but <laughs> God had other plans. Amen? So when God looks at us, as the choir song so wonderfully said, it's not how you feel, it's what he says. It's not what the day brings you, it's what the living day, the eternal God, gives us every day. We live every day in his grace. We take every step in the shadow of his mercy. And I don't ever want to have one second of this life without it. I am grateful that I am loved the way that God loves me. I am grateful that when I sin, not if I sin, but when I sin, I have a God who loves me anyway. I am grateful that I have a God that I cannot disappoint because I am his child. And since I gave him my heart in my life, I have been his child. And I belong to him. And he is there for me. And that makes all the difference. So no matter the circumstance of life, no matter the difficulty that is there, God's love is with me. And no matter whom I'm around, I'm to love them. Now, agape is hard. Phileo is when we love because we enjoy it. But we don't give that love when we don't enjoy it. You go to a restaurant, you order food, and you pay for it, and it's not very good. Are you going back? Not me. I might give it a second chance. But if, you know, strike one, strike two, you're a fool if you go back for strike three, right? That's just what, that, that's common thought. Are you, are you good with it? You give someone a chance and they blow it, you may give them a second chance. Are you going to give them a third? Well, there's a difference between the things of life and the things of God. I don't like coconut. By the way, I'm not eating more of it. Every now and again, I'll get some without knowing it, and then the holy spitting goes on. <laughs> Does anybody, can I get a witness? Now, that's just me. I, 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 that's my preference right? I'd rather have steak. I love steak. I'm a Baptist preacher. Was I supposed to say fried chicken there? Right? But there are preferences in life. But with God and people, there are no preferences. Now here's the thing that, that, that's, that's hard, is the Lord tells us not just to love, but to love our enemies. Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies. By the way, you do not have to declare them as your enemy. If they declare you as the enemy, you feel like you're in war. Is that true? You haven't done anything wrong to them, but every time you see them, there's a crossword or a cross look or something. Or maybe there is something that they've done to you and you, you feel like you've been hurt by it and, and you don't want to have anything to do with that again. Phileo, you remove your love from it, right? He says, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Not blast, bless. Do good to those who hate you. Some of us need to do a lot of doing good to all those who people who uh, might not like us very well. Pray for those people who spitefully use you and persecute you. I used to pray, God, get them. Then I figured out he was telling me, God, love them. So really, when I say pray, 
He already loves them. I'm praying that God will give me love for them. Now, church, listen. Bless, agape, cherish those that are attacking you. Do good to those that hate you. In Luke 6, 35, he says, do good. Love your enemies. Do good. Lend. How many of you are willing to go take that thing that you hold precious that belongs to you and give it away in hopes that it comes back but in knowledge that it probably won't? But if you love, he says lend. He says, and lend hoping for nothing in return. That doesn't mean you make them sign a contract that they have to have it by a certain day back. If they come and ask of you, though there's nothing, listen to me now, nothing in you that makes you want to do it because of God you do it anyway because of God you do it anyway I'm gonna try it one more time because you love God and because God loves you you do it anyway that's the Christian life he says and your reward will be great you will be called sons of the Most High for he is kind to the unthankful and evil he does good even if they're not thankful for it even if they have bad motives do good here's the problem we may in this church building today say well I love everybody and that's easy to say in this building but there's a lot of people that are not like me and because they're not like me I have to make effort to love them Saturday a week ago I was no Friday yeah Friday a week ago I was mowing my grass minding my own business doing my husbandly duty amen <clears throat> I did it with a smile on my face with my riding mower and I was gnawing it down and I got attacked by a yellow jacket and I'm allergic and I'm a bulldog <clears throat> amen hey, good go dogs <clears throat> there's nothing good about a yellow jacket I think Noah should have taken care of him a long time ago I don't like those things and they don't like me evidently when I mess with them so my leg blew up and I took a handful of Benadryl because I wanted to breathe and then I had the Benadryl hangover y'all know what I'm talking about and I preached last Sunday with the Benadryl hangover <laughs> now actually I slept the night away and it was good but I'm a bulldog and I don't like gators either can I offend everybody here today? I don't like Gamecocks. I don't like the Tide. Yes, Susan, I don't like the Tide. <clears throat> I don't like Volunteers or Wildcats or, you know, I don't like any of them. But I'm a dog. Amen? Now, that will change in, after the bowl season and I'll become a human again. I might bear with them until recruiting season's over. Um, I'm not going to tell you who I voted for, but he won. <clears throat> Amen. But I don't care if you liked him or I don't care if you liked her. I don't care if you bleed red. I don't care if you bleed blue. I don't care if you call yourself a liberal or if you call yourself a conservative. God told me to love you. But sometimes it's hard to love the ones that are opposite you. Uh, I went to a high school where there were a lot of cliques. I don't know if you had that in your high school. But there was this group of cliques and that group of cliques, and there was a lot of clicking going on. And I was kind of one of those people. I kind of got along with everybody. But then I found out that I was acted a certain way when I was around this group, and I acted a different way when I was around that group, and a different way when I was around that group. And I started getting dizzy by all the cliques. And I believed I, I began to snob snobs. I don't like snobs, do you? And I found out that people treated people differently if you had money, if you came for money, or if you didn't have money, or if you didn't come for money. And by the way, that went both ways. It went both ways. The rich don't like the poor sometimes. The poor don't like the rich. The poor that become rich forget where they came from. The rich who became poor, they have resentment in their heart. It doesn't seem like anybody gets along with anybody in our world today. Those who are educated, 
look down on those that are not. Those who, who talk a certain way look differently against those who park the car in Boston, park the car in the yard. Is that how it goes? My brother married a southern peach. She was killed in a car wreck. Then he married a girl from New Jersey. God help us. <laughs> Amen. What I've learned sometimes, opposites attract. Sometimes a boy can get into a fight in the playground and give another boy a, a bloody nose, and the next thing you know, they're best friends. Sometimes opposites can be that way. But sometimes opposites just remain opposites. Isn't that true? Sometimes I'm a very, hopefully, a Christ-honoring person, but I don't want to be religious. Religion is man-made. And we have a tendency to look down our noses about others and judge them. Even those who call on the name of Christ. Tonight, Hazel Creek's going to come and be in the house. Y'all are invited, and I wish we had this big of a group tonight. I really do. One of New Holland's sons, a man of God, Trent Smith. Y'all may know his brother. I believe Andy won most of those fights. Amen. <laughs> Polly, you and your wife did good. They're going to be in the house tonight, and I, I hope we have a house full. I really do. I hope that you take advantage of that. But in August, I've got a Methodist church coming to join us. Now, y'all can go oh, all you want to. There's a lot going on in the Methodist church, and i got a lot of Methodist friends that are as conservative as I am or more so. And I am grateful for the Methodist in Russia and Africa who won that fight over homosexuality in the Methodist church. But there's still a whole lot going on. Matter of fact, one of my friends has been called before the bishop at the end of this month and has to sit down in front of the bishop, a lady, and she's going to rake him over the coals, ask me to pray for him. Look, I don't want to throw stones at anybody. I don't care what flavor you have. As far as I know, there's one Lord sitting on the throne in heaven, and he's Lord of all. He is the Lord of hosts. You can be liturgical if you want to be. You can be contemporary. I don't know what the music sounded like to Psalms 23. David probably played it really well, but I like the way the orchestra and the choir sang today. I like the way you sang. I don't want to get in holy wars. I think we're supposed to love everybody. I think we're supposed to love opposites. Big churches, small churches, city churches, country churches. Churches with music, churches without music. Have y'all heard the Church of Christ? They can sing the roof down just with the voices. I tell you what, I don't know about all these things, but there's a lot of things that divide us, isn't there? There's a lot of opposites that are out there. Ethics. The Methodist Church had to deal with that. I love my wife. But in America today, there's a lot of women who love their wives. You'll get that in a minute. Who am I to not love them? I might not love the action, but I must love the soul. And I'm not asking them to come to my opinion. I want them to come to Christ. Christ can do all the changing he needs to do. I don't care what the color of their skin is. I don't care if they wear hats or if they don't wear hats. I don't care if they wear blue jeans or if they wear suits and ties. I don't care. I'm supposed to love. When I was a kid, we said not to judge a book by its cover. You ever heard that? And we know that's wrong. But we're still judging a book by its title. We don't get to know them. We don't listen into their life. How many of you senior adults really know what it's like to be a teenager nowadays. You know what it was like when you were a teenager, but I'm here to tell you it's tougher. It's tougher. It's hard. How many of you know what it was like to be an older adult 
when you're young and you can bend down and tie your shoes and they got one of those grabbers that they got in Walmart to help them put their socks on. Have y'all seen those? That's the gifts we get on Father's Day. How many of you know what it was like to be poor? My dad grew up in the Depression. For the remainder of his life, he walked around with at least $1,000 in his pocket. He wouldn't go anywhere without money because he grew up poor. How many of you know what it's like to be rich? And to have people think that, that you are a certain way because you wear a certain type of clothes or drive a certain vehicle or you have a title at work. You see, the owner of the company has problems as well as the worker in the company. But they're opposites, aren't they? And we're told that we're supposed to love them. But a lot of times all we do is ignore them. Birds of a feather flock together. Have you ever heard that? May it never be in the church. I like it that we have gray hair and the little curly hair of my granddaughter. I'm grateful that we have the blue hair and the purple hair and the no hair. Amen? I'm glad that there's some big ones and some small ones and some that are changing in between. I'm glad that, that we can extend a hand and it doesn't have to have a gun in it. I'm glad that we all have tongues and I wish that we could use them better. I love church and I love the feeling that we have when we come together. I love the smile that you bring on your face. I love the love that's in this room. There's some good people here. There's a lot of talent in this room. And the Lord said never to take our light and hide it under a bushel. What good does it do if we're the only ones who see the love in this room? When the world's desperate for it. Can I just say a few things real quickly up from my heart? We have more people in the world today than we ever have. We have more people in the United States today than we ever have. And we have more lonely people than we ever have. Holidays are a big thing to me. I love holidays. But holidays are the bane of some people's existence because it just shows how alone they are. What's happened to our family, the breakup of our family, has left pain and brokenness. Families have been shattered, but listen to me, hearts have been shattered. The ripple effect of divorce I'm not preaching against anything. I don't want anyone to have to go through pain. I'm against abortion. Head to toe, every fiber in between. But I don't have the right to pass judgment and not love the one who had the abortion. And that's tough for me. But God didn't call us to ease. He told us to take up our cross. What's the next word? Daily and follow him. He called us to love. So when my friend called me and said, you want some bread? <laughs> Didn't even, it came out of my mouth before I thought about it. I thought, Absolutely. Then I'm laying there in bed going, what in the world am I going to do with 400 loaves of bread? <laughs> and it was just like God said, share it. 
So I said, amen. And then he said, um, Brian, not you. Let my people share it. Now, Ed, I love you to death. And the, the red truck is famous around here for what you do in your red truck. And uh, amen, amen, and amen. I, I, I love your heart. And if y'all want some rye bread or some, I, I lost count of how many different types of bread, you come get it. But the purpose of this is I want you to take it and give it away in Jesus' name. I want you to take it and say, my preacher gave this to me. Now, for those of you who are thinking it's six weeks old, it came from the shelves of Ingalls yesterday. All right? Because they're going to put some North Fresh out there. But they normally take it to a store and sell it. And it stays in that st store for a certain length of time. So it's still good. And I had some for breakfast. And God said, amen. <clears throat> and my stomach said, amen. But what I want you to do is I want you to see all the different types up here. And I want you to come up here and take it, and I want you to give it to somebody and say, my preacher gave this to me so that I could give it to you. And I want you to quote John chapter 6, verse 35. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Bread is substance. And I just want to tell you, Jesus means everything to me. Now hold on. Is that simple? It's extremely simple. Hey, brother. Can I, by the way, I did this yesterday. I came to church, stacked all this up here, and I went walking up and down the road with a cart with bread. Not one person said no. Not one person. Everyone said yes, and when I told them what I was doing, everyone was glad and grateful with a smile. And get this, people I didn't know, I, had not, I didn't know any of them, are now my friends. And they're different. I found Christian and non-Christian. And we're supposed to give a cup of cold water in Jesus' name, aren't we? Why can't we give a loaf of bread in Jesus' name? The Lord told me to do this. And, and one of two things is going to happen. And I'm, I, I, I've done my part. I've done my part. You're going to take it. And you're going to go home. And you're going to stop by Kroger on the way home and get some cream cheese and some peanut butter. And you're going to have a wonderful time. And to that I say amen. I've already prayed the indigestion out of it. <laughs> Except there's some onion loaf up here too, and I don't know about that. But I look, there is no coconut. You're good. All right? But listen, or you're going to take it, and you're going to pray about it, and my sermon today was supposed to be on divine inspiration. And I'm praying that we have the lesson before we get the sermon. And I'm praying that, that between now and next week, you're going to give this to someone, and you're not going to preach a sermon. You're just going to say, my preacher gave this to me so that I can give this to you. John 6, 35, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. He means the world to me, and I just wanted to give this to you in Jesus' name. Take two. I got buns over here, as the kids found out. <laughs> we got hot dog buns. We got hamburger buns. We got every flavor in the world. Uh, we got Jewish bread. We got leaven bread. We got all kinds of bread. But mostly, I'm just grateful I got Jesus. Great boy, I got you. Um, I had a friend call me Thursday week ago. I was having to go to the airport to pick up someone, and I was driving back, and he called me and said, uh, 
Pastor, I need to talk to you. I said, well, talk, brother. He said, no, 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 I need to talk to you. And I said, I'm driving back from the airport, Greenville, Spartanburg. I said, uh, told him when I'd be back. And I said, I'll call you when I get back. I said, make a pot of coffee, and I'm coming. <clears throat> and I went to their house, and the coffee was made, amen. And we sat down, and I'd known he'd been in bad health, and he said, uh, they, they, they called hospice in on me. And uh, he'd had, I knew he had, had had cancer in the past, but I didn't know exactly the, the condition he was in. And uh, we talked for the next three hours. And he sent his wife out of the room, and he confessed some things to me. I'm not a priest. And when God, God knew those things, but I understood where he was coming from, and I listened to him. And I said, brother, God's, the blood of Christ has got this covered. You're good. You're good. He said, uh, I just wanted to make sure everything was right before I go. This past Thursday, he went to be with the Lord. And I got thinking about it. The thing that he wanted to tell me was 45 years old. And he had been walking around with regret for 45 years. He didn't have to. He just didn't think he could let it go. Y'all hear me? So for 45 years, he walked with a chain, with a ball and chain around his ankle. When Christ had already set it free all those years ago, he walked around, listen to me now, with regret. When he could have been put under the blood of Christ and he could have been walking around rejoicing. I'm grateful he got it taken care of before he went to be with the Lord. He was a dear friend. We called him Two Tall Tim. He was six foot seven and weighed about, he weighed less than me. And I'm not six foot seven. Tall, thin, look like a pencil. I think there's some people that we need to love that if we don't love, we're going to have regret. They're opposite to us. It may be hard. The Lord said, love even your enemy. And I wonder, instead of burning bridges, why can't we build some? Instead of Tearing down, why can't we let God give us a vision of doing something greater? What would it be like if everybody came up here and got two or three loaves and went out this week and did the most simple thing in the name of Jesus? What would happen at New Holland Baptist Church? Because you see, love is a verb. When we say, I love, that sounds like a noun. But I'm here to tell you, love is a verb. Love does. Love just doesn't speak. Love does. So, let your love so shine before men. Let that light be a light. I'm going to ask this morning if, Janice, if you'll just come play. We're going to do things a little differently. If God is dealing with you in your heart today and there's something that you need to talk to me about or you need to talk to Mark about, we're going to be in the room over here, the big brother's room, and we'll be around and we'll talk to you. We'll pray with you. Maybe there's an enemy that you need me to pray with you about, someone that God's put you on your heart. I'm going to let you do that. But we're going to do this differently. I don't always do this way, the invitation, but what I'm going to let, I'm going to pray and we're going to let Janice play the piano. And I'm going to let you come. And this will be our dismissal. You can come and get your bread. And you can, don't congregate in the aisle because somebody else may need to come after for two, but.
You can come here. There's some over there. Let's just in the next few moments take up our cross. Maybe we just need to leave our, leave our pride down and just say, it really doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it anyway in Jesus' name. I really don't want to, but I'm still going to do it in Jesus' name. Is that good? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity. You gave us the love, the love of heaven, the love that goes beyond, the love that multiplies, the love that is truly a miracle. Lord, uh, I pray that we do not take that for granted, but Lord, that we would honor you and glorify your name by, Lord, letting your love be seen in us this week. It may be seen as quaint, insignificant, and Lord, some may not want to. That's okay. But Lord, for those that do, I pray for every person, for every gift, for every recipient. May it be said from a heart overflowing, Lord, may we be grateful as we go that we have and Lord, may we do this in Jesus' name. And when we do it in you, when you are high and lifted up, may you draw all people unto yourself. Lord, may there be many gospel presentations or many seeds planted by the faithfulness of this loving, loving people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.